there's so many similarities in the messages and the emails and the discussions that I have. It's students struggling with motivation and procrastination and focus, concentration, getting their habits right, doing the stuff that they know they need to do, putting the hours in, getting, you know, get, get, getting the focus right and, and feeling like they're not doing enough and that it's just not going well and they're never going to get this right and they're falling behind and um, other people seem somehow okay with it. There's just there's so many of these types of discussions that I have with students that, that struggle with their studies, no matter... You know, no matter how many amazing lecturers they have, no matter what resources they have access to, no matter how awesome the textbooks, no matter how awesome the lectures, etc. These are common challenges that we have when we face a goal like this. And I want you to slow down for five seconds. Okay, maybe more than five seconds. <laughs> I want you to slow down and I want you to hear me when, when I say this, is that the stuff that you're struggling with, is not about your subjects. It is not about the topics. It is not about the fact that you're not smart enough to pass this and you're not smart enough to do this. Let me explain to you what is going on. Okay, I'm gonna use a completely non-study analogy. So, you know, forgive me for my total non-study analogy. All right, imagine that your goal is to climb Mount Everest. Okay, that is your goal. That's what you wanna do. That's what you have in mind. And you go, I wanna climb Mount Everest. I need someone to tell me how I'm going to achieve that goal. I need to know what to do, right? So you look up and you go, okay, you need to be able to climb. And you go to an expert and they say to you, okay, here's how you do. You need to be able to climb and you need to be able to hike and you need to be really, really fit, okay? So if that's the information that you hear and you go and you work on that, right? And you go, okay, so I need to learn to climb. I need to learn fitness. I need to get fitter. I need you know, my hiking skills, etc." And you work on that and you work on that and you're focusing on on your climbing skills on your hiking skills and focusing on your fitness da, 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 da. okay fine and you keep going and you keep it and years and years and years and you get amazing at these skills and then you go to mount everest and you realize that there's something that no one told you okay it's cold <laughs> it is freezing it's cold right this is what's going to stop you. No matter how much of an incredible climber you are, no matter how fit you are, no matter how incredible your hiking skills are, if you don't have a jacket, you're in trouble. Okay? This is going to get in your way. Now, if no one told you how much of an impact climate and temperature would play in your journey climbing Mount Everest, then what's going to get in the way of your success? Is it going to be the fact that you don't have the climbing skills? Is it the fact that you're not fit enough? No, it's the fact that there was information, there was a skill, there was something going on that you were not paying attention to, that no one told you about, that you did, were not aware was going to be an issue, okay? The cold, all right? You need to be able to hike when it's cold. You need to be able to climb when it's cold. You need to be able to use your fitness when it's cold. That temperature, that climate, that cold pervades every step you take. Okay? Now, why on earth is this relevant for you? Okay? Because the mental stress you carry, the fears, the uncertainties, the self-doubt, the mindset, the perfectionism, the habits we have, the beliefs we have about learning, these are like the cold. These are like the climate in your goal, right? And no one talks about them. No one tells you how this impacts your journey. So you go for your goal, for your studying, you focus on the climbing, right? You're studying your subjects, your accounting knowledge, all your topics, you know, like all of the stuff, you're studying the stuff and you're focusing on it as you move through these levels and you're working on these things. And you're focusing on all the topics. You're focusing on all the technical skills, right? Just like our climber is focusing on the, the, the climbing and the fitness, the stuff that directly, like they can see directly impacts my ability to get to the top of Mount Everest is my ability to climb. That's what we see. But no one's telling us that if we are not able to manage our performance, if we are not, if we don't understand our mindset, if we don't understand how our brain works, if we don't understand our habits, if we don't understand our perfectionism and the role that these play in our challenges, okay, it's going to add an incredible amount of stress. And it's also an unexpected stress because there we are, 
looking at the year and we're going, okay, I'm prepared for difficult topics. I'm prepared for the hard stuff. I'm prepared for the theory. I'm prepared for the details, for the volume. But what I was not prepared for was this feeling of stupidity. I was not prepared for the constant stress. I was not prepared for the fact that I feel like what I'm doing is running downhill. And if I don't run fast enough, I'm going to trip over and, and, and I'm going to fall and I'm never going to be able to get up again. I was not prepared for the fact that I just don't seem to be able to sit down and start studying. I was not prepared for the feelings of procrastination, for the fear. I was not prepared for all the self-doubt and the lack of confidence. I was not prepared for the fact that you know, when I start studying and something kind of goes wrong, my whole life feels like it's falling apart. I was not prepared for the fact that I just don't think I'm ever going to be able to do this. And all I'm obsessing about this is the only thing I can think about because I want it so much. And I can't understand why I'm sabotaging myself because I've never wanted anything more than this. Right? All of the stuff that's going on in your head, all of this mental stuff is like the cold. And somehow you have to study your subjects while you're cold. And nobody's given you a jacket, okay? Worse than that, nobody even told you you needed a jacket. Through all the studying that you've done, it was good enough just to be able to climb. It was good enough just to be fit. It was good enough to be able to hike, right? So in the past, in a lot of cases, your, your knowledge, your subject knowledge, etc., is good enough. And then you hit a certain level in your studies and the cold sets in. And all of this other stuff starts becoming very important and it becomes pervasive. It impacts everything you do, all your study sessions, all your exams, because you take your mind with you wherever you go. When you're sitting at that desk, it's you and your mind, it's you and your brain. And it is incredibly difficult to focus on the knowledge, to try and get the knowledge, to try and work through these skills that you need with all of this baggage sitting on top of you. And I, the reason that I'm saying this, I want you to understand, one, the first thing I want you to understand is that the cold is part of the journey, okay? In our example with climbing Mount Everest, okay? You are not cold because there's something wrong with you. You are not cold because you're weak. You are not cold because you're not going to make it and you're a failure. You're not cold because you're a loser. You're cold because that is part of the challenge, right? That is part of the situation. When you take on the task to climb Mount Everest, the cold is part of the challenge, right? We may just measure it in terms of like, you know, the height, you know, this is how many uh, this is how many kilometers or, you know, this is, this is the height and this is the altitude we need to get to. But the reality is that when we list out the stuff that's going to challenge us, the cold is there and it doesn't go anywhere. It's not going away. You're not cold because you're a bad climber. You're cold because it's cold. The first thing I want you to know and understand is that you are struggling with this mental stuff because that's part of the journey. Okay. You are not struggling with the mental stuff because there's something wrong with you, because you're not smart enough, because you shouldn't be doing this, because uh, you know, maybe everyone else should be here and not you, and, and, and. you're not struggling with this because, um, because you're a loser, you're, not, you're struggling with this because it's part of the journey. Okay? When you get to Mount Everest, you struggle with the cold because it's cold. Not because you're a bad climber, because it's cold, okay? The second thing, what do we do about this, okay? The experienced climber, the guy who's amazing, the guy who's going to get to the top, the woman who's going to get to the top of that mountain, again and again and again, they feel the cold, okay? Your experienced, amazing, expert climbers still get cold. So what is the difference between you freaked out, freezing, and this amazing experienced climber? They have a jacket, right? They have a jacket. Their experience has taught them 
that they need to understand the cold and work with the cold. They need to build the skill of dealing with the cold. They don't try and pretend it's not there. They don't try and pretend it doesn't exist. They don't try and ignore it. They don't tell themselves how useless they are because other people wouldn't be feeling cold. They get themselves the best jacket money can buy, right? They get a jacket. They learn how to deal with the cold. They learn what clothing to use. They learn what they should be eating and drinking. I don't even know all the stuff. It's not like I climb Mount Everest, but <laughs> what's it an example that you can understand, right? You manage the cold. The experienced climbers manage the cold. So what do the experienced students do? If you want to deal with stuff, what do you need to do? You need to manage the stuff. You need to understand how it impacts you. You need to understand the skills that you need to build in order to manage these stresses, in order to manage the stuff, in order to deal with it, to work with it so that you can overcome this. You can build resilience. You can build that emotional strength. You can work through the fear. That fear, that uncertainty, the lack of motivation, that stuff is not magically going to go away. You're not going to wake up tomorrow morning and it's all going to have gone away. And for someone who's like a really amazing student, they still struggle with motivation. They still struggle with feelings of stupidity. They still struggle with feelings of uncertainty. Okay? The best student, the guys that are in the top 10, still feel stupid, but they manage their emotion. That's two things I want you to take from this. One, the cold is part of of the journey. The mental stress, the fears, the emotions, the worries, all of that stuff, the anxiety, the procrastination, the time management stuff, all of that stuff that's not directly subject related. Okay? We're going to call it the cold. That's the cold, right? Everything that's not subject knowledge, that's the cold. All the stuff is the cold, right? The cold is part of the journey. It's not cold because there's something wrong with you. It's cold because that's part of the journey. That's the one thing I want you to understand, okay? Number two, the really experienced people, the guys in the top 10, the guys who are doing amazing at this, still feel the cold. They are still cold. They acknowledge that the cold is there and they have bought the clothes they need, okay? They've got the right jackets. They understand how to deal with it. They know how to eat to keep warm. They have built skills to deal with the cold. Okay, so if you're in this position where you're worried about all the stuff, you've got all these things going on, I'm worried about the procrastination and I'm worried about this and I'm so far behind and I don't want to do and the stress and the panic and the fear and the uncertainty and all of this stuff, we, we feel as though... Yvonne, the reason I'm struggling with this is because I'm slow and I'm stupid and I'm not going to be able to do this and I don't know what's going on and I'm never going to be able to get there and I should be smarter, I should be doing this, I should be doing that, I should know what's going on here by now, I should be able to do this, other people would be doing it better, other people would be doing it differently, it's because I'm struggling with this, it's because, 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 no, it's cold, <laughs> okay, it is the cold and the cold is part of the journey. So what you need to be doing is acknowledging the cold, looking at the cold, understanding what the cold is, and then looking at how do we deal with the cold. Okay? The cold is part of the journey. So calm down. Relax. There is nothing wrong with you. This is part of the journey. Sadly, no one's written the textbook for how to deal with the cold. You've got the textbooks of how to deal with all the accounting stuff, all the subject knowledge. No one's told you how to deal with the cold. And that's why I do what I do, because I'm trying to help you deal with the cold. All the stuff that you look at, that you go, oh, Yvonne, but it's like this little warm, fuzzy stuff and your weird motivational stuff and like all of this stuff. No, I'm trying to help you put a jacket on. Okay, all of the stuff, understanding how your brain works, understanding your mindset, understanding your perfectionism, understanding all of the stuff is I'm trying to help you find your jacket. Because if you understand that, and if you work with the cold, and if you build measures to deal with the cold, your journey is going to be a lot easier. And then you can focus on your climbing skills. You can focus on all your technical skills because you're not held back by all of your emotions and your fears and the immense anxiety, the amount of energy that we expend on the fear and the anxiety and the panic and the uncertainty is crazy. Ask me. I know. I've been there. I've been there. Been there. 
we turn ourselves inside out with the anxiety from day one of our study. It never occurred to me that this was part of the journey. It never occurred to me that this was normal. It never occurred to me that there was any other way to do this. I just thought that the only reason I was struggling was because there was, I wasn't studying enough. I wasn't, I wasn't working hard enough, I wasn't studying enough, and if I couldn't get something right the first time, it was because there was something wrong with me. And so I was continually running to catch up to something. I was, it was like falling downhill, and I was just trying so desperately to put one foot in front of the other and freaking out the entire time. And I know most of my students are in the same position. Okay? So that, I want you to understand the reason that I focus on this stuff is because the cold is getting in your way. You want to, and you only focus on the climbing skills, the fitness skills. But guys, the cold is getting in the way. Need you to acknowledge the cold. So, two things. Two things. The cold is part of the journey. All of your mental stress, all of the anxieties, all of the fears, the worries, the procrastination, the time management is part of the journey. Number two, experienced climbers bring a jacket. 